I don't want to say hate, you know, being at a Catholic university, I don't think you're allowed to use that, but there's a strong dislike for that burgundy and yellow. It is the ugliest uniform on the face of the earth, without a doubt. And I look forward to them, you know, taking that, you know, whatever that stupid song is and shutting it up. I mean, that's, I mean, it's a, and you may know, I'm a little passionate about it. Little. I do not like USC. I cannot stand them. Passionately do not like them. I hate it when they come in here, uh, dislike strongly for them to come in here. And, you know, it means a lot to guys. I mean, it's a, and this is our big, you know, uh, alumni, football alumni game. So this is on a lot of guys' calendars that played in this rivalry. So there's definitely something there. Our cameras now take you to Detroit, Michigan for a night gridiron battle between the undefeated Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the University of Detroit. Detroit kicks off. Notre Dame's Johnny Pettibon takes it on the 15-yard line, and at the 40, Neil Wharton throws a tremendous block that cuts down the last defender, and Pettibon streaks the remaining distance to complete an 85-yard touchdown gallop. I think we all know about uh, the great games that have been played in the past. Uh, you know, it was, for us, it was, uh, you know, breaking through last year and getting a, uh, a win at USC. I know that, um, you know, they're... Uh, they're certainly wanting to uh, even that score. So it's just going to be a great college football game. It's what um, you know you all expect when, when Notre Dame plays USC. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, noise, uh, a lot of hype, and uh, our players just need to focus on you know, what they've done well over the past month or so, and that's uh, you know, playing good football. Your thoughts on playing a night game at home? It hasn't happened in a long time. Are you guys excited for that? We are. There's no question that you know, we're at home, you know, we're excited about being on national television. Um, clearly our players uh, are uh, looking forward to being uh, that, you know, that one game and, and at night at, at Notre Dame Stadium. They haven't experienced anything. So this is a first time experience and, you know, uh, like anybody else, they love those first time experiences. Since Notre Dame Stadium opened in 1930, this kind of picture has been the norm. The golden dome gleaming in the autumn colors across the campus. Only one time since 1966 has the crowd been less than capacity of 59,075. Tonight, 52 years after construction, the national appetite for college football justifying advanced technology to produce sufficient portable lighting. And ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to a first. The night the lights went on at Notre Dame Stadium with six of these massive towers from Moscow Sport Lighting casting a daylight-like glow over Notre Dame Stadium. The fullback, Moriarty. To the corner. Touchdown. Great call. Forward to the left. Ball goes to Bell. Bell to the left side. Bell to the goal line. Notre Dame's playing its first night game in 21 years. Inside the building, how big a deal is it? Um, I mean, it's, it's exciting. You know, we uh, we look, we you know, we talk about it and things like that. But at the same time, we can't get too deep into it because it's a football game. It doesn't matter if the sun's out or the moon's out. I mean, the moon's up. So you really just have to, you know, focus on your opponent at hand and uh, try not to get too, you know, big into it. But at the same time, it's gonna. It's like you know, coach talks about time. It's gonna be things that distract you, and that's gonna be one thing. It's being a night game, but. We can't let that affect how we play. This one a little bit wobbly. Tim Brown at the 30. Tim Brown. One man to beat. He's gone. Irish are coming. Montgomery hangs it high. He backs Brown up to the 34. One man to beat again. Tim Brown will score. Fire! 
Do night games have a different vibe? Night games do have a different vibe. You know, it seems like it's just it's more prime time than usual. Um, you know, I want it to be that 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 real college atmosphere that you know that. Sometimes we just don't get in the stadium. It's not a problem at all. But you know, we don't have 105,000 like Michigan does. You know, stuff like that. You know, but I just wanted to be as crazy as possible. Michigan and Notre Dame. It's a matchup that starts the blood of tingling, and we'll be coming back with a kickoff. Standing back on his own 30-yard line is driven back by Gillette inside the 20 on a beautiful punt. But Waters finds a hole, one man to beat, he's gone. Ricky Waters makes like Tim Brown on his first punt return. There are no penalty flags. Uh, the defense trying to quiet the crowd. opportunity the referee has to take control here he can go ask the PA announcer to tell the crowd to be quiet or they'll charge a timeout against Notre Dame or talk to the captain second and goal Taylor again pleading with the referee and backs out and there is the penalty flag thrown against the crowd up to Reggie Ho now with time running out. The other two important men in this sequence are the snapper, Timmy Grunhard, number 75. He's 6'3", 279. And number 11, Pete Graham. So here we go, a 26-yarder. Good for Ho. He's four for four. The biggest little man in South Bend. It is Mike Gillette, who earlier kicked a 49-yarder, will attempt a 48-yarder with Ken Solemn holding. Dave Wilde will snap it back. Kick is on the way. No good. Notre Dame wins it. We knew defense would have to carry us, but I, we're just glad to win and proud of our fans. They were tremendous, even though they got us a timeout. I, I like night games for, for a couple of reasons. One of them is that, you know, you kind of have a little more downtime in the hotel before you get to kind of sit around and, and really, you know, if, if you're an older guy like me, I suppose I like it because... I get a little more sleep. I know the younger guys kind of have their nerves weighing on them a little bit longer. But, uh, you know, just in the stadium, you know, you can tell the, the fans are always a little more into it. They've, uh, you know, had a little more time at the tailgates, I think. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a different atmosphere. It's something I think we all enjoy. Notre Dame on second and goal. Running the option, Meyer will keep it and score. Burbacks pass, lofted into the end zone and picked off. Michael Stonebreaker. Look who's wide. It's Derek Brown. He's rolling that way. Instead, it's Gerald at the goal line. Notre Dame takes the lead. From the 41, great starting position. They're back intercepted. Reggie Brooks. Other seven defenders are past the 50. Here comes Chris Zorich trying to end it quickly. And the clock 
expires. Notre Dame has come from behind to claim victory in its season opener. And then the final aspect is recruiting, getting our staff out there recruiting. So we were able to accomplish a lot of those goals this week. We're trying to expand Hope's resume. Look at this guy. This isn't makeup. This is cover-up. No. Oh, you're doing the... Oh, okay. Oh, you're throwing something. You take... Do whatever you got to do. I don't care. Joining us now, the head football coach of the University of Notre Dame, one Brian Kelly. But how different to you is Notre Dame USC? It's the rivalry game, and again, each and every week we're told that it's the, the uh, opposition's rivalry game. This is ours. Uh, we have a that game. Uh, and, and a lot of people would say, well, we're not doing this for recruits. Coach, so the first time you meet a recruit, what are the things that that young man can do or say that lets you know he's a potential Notre Dame football player? Well, you know, I don't know if it's scripted as much as it is. You got to get a sense that uh, uh, the young man loves to play the game. I mean, that would be important too. That was just, that was just something that first too. Oh, I've been doing it 21 years. I, I can never remember the kinds of ways that we turn it over in scoring years. Beautiful, you got there. Just that. We're getting better. We're getting better. I love it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. South Florida, five more minutes of the game, you win. I might. Michigan, it's going to be up to y'all. Turnover, nine turnovers, nine turnovers, nine turnovers the first two games. Like, we've got to kill you. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. My crew here. How's it going? <laughs> it looks like it's uh, not bad. 